This video is intended for somebody who's never touched a spectrum analyzer before. And there's a little bit of uh, strange things that uh, about spectrum analyzers that you need to know. And uh, hopefully this, uh, this will help you answer some of those questions that you have. So I'm assuming that you've never laid eyes on a spectrum analyzer. It's your first time you're going to power one up and you're just not sure how to use it. Uh, so this particular spectrum analyzer is an HP 8591E. And it's good from about uh, 10 kilohertz up to 1.9 megahertz, 1.8 gigahertz, 1.8 gigahertz. Um, and so what is a spectrum analyzer? Uh, looks like an oscilloscope. Well, oscilloscopes give you a picture like this one, but it's time versus amplitude. And spectrum analyzers give you a picture that's frequency versus amplitude. So it's, it's kind of like a radio that's constantly tuning all the time. And if there is some frequency content somewhere, it'll show up in the, in the display, and, and, I'll, and I'll show that. So what do you need to know before you even start to use it? Well, the first thing is, you know, does the spectrum analyzer cover the frequency range that you're interested in? And uh, is it uh, going to be able to input the data that you need? So there's some connectors on the front and th there's sometimes a BNC, sometimes this is an N-type connector or N-connector. Um, sometimes there's different connectors, maybe an SMA. So you, first thing you have to do is figure out whether the connector is going to mate with what you're measuring. So I have an adapter here. I'm going to put the adapter in so I can use BNC because that's much more convenient for me. All right. So like I said before, the spectrum analyzer gives you a graph of uh, frequency versus amplitude. So, so we want to just put a frequency right in. But what about amplitude? What is the range of amplitudes that you can measure? Well, there is a uh, warning here on the input. And it says uh, uh, less than plus 30 dBm and uh, less than 25 volts DC. Now, as a general rule, I say never, ever, ever put any DC into a spectrum analyzer. So just, I would change the label and say zero volts. Just don't put DC into the instrument. If you do have some circuit that you think has DC on it, then put a blocking capacitor in between. You can buy these uh, that screw on and it's a capacitor. And so the DC can't go through, but the AC can go through. All right. The other thing you have to worry about is you want to make sure you're below this plus 30 dBm. Uh, so my rule of thumb is always 0 dBm. I always like to start at 0. I'm going to make sure I never have more than 0 dBm. That's 1 milliwatt. And that's what's going to go inside the instrument, all right? So just because we want to look like we're actually doing something here, uh, this spectrum analyzer has a calibration output. So it'll give us something to look at. So I'm going to hook up a cable that goes between these two. And now we have something to look at, okay? So this gives you an idea of what type of picture you'll get. Um, it's going to be these constant peaks where there's a, where there's a frequency. So the, we see that there's uh, many frequencies. It's almost like looking at radio stations, there's like many radio stations. And so the reason that we have so many is this is a 300 megahertz calibrator, but it's a square wave. So we get the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic. So this peak's going to happen around 300, 600, 900. 1200, 1500, and so on, right? And so that's what is being displayed here. And then the amplitude of each. So each harmonic is not the same intensity. They, they go up and down, all right? So what is the x-axis and what is the y-axis? Well, we can have a start and a stop on the, on the, uh, on the x-axis, or we can have a center and a span. So there's two ways for us to, to tell the instrument what we want to do. We can say start, stop, or center, and then how, how big of a span, right? So we have a 300 megahertz signal. Let's go ahead and say we have a center. We're going to press the frequency button that says center. We're going to say 300 megahertz. Now that's going to put us right in the middle here, right at 300, okay? Now we have a whole bunch of them. Now we have uh, some to the left and some to the right. Uh, well, that doesn't really make any sense. Um, how, how can that be, okay? Um, so we're going to get to it later, but just for now, uh, I'm going to show you how a marker works. If I push the marker button, I get this little, uh, this little marker. 
and I can move it around with the wheel and I can put it here on this peak. So remember this peak, uh, this peak's gonna give me at 300 megahertz. It's gonna tell me the amplitude at 300 megahertz. What's this one over here, okay? This one over here is at zero hertz. And what about this one over here? This one is at minus 300 megahertz. Whoa, what's going on there? So right away, spectrum analyzers are strange. Um, they work above zero hertz, of course, but there's a reflection that happens inside the instrument and you get negative things. So if you zoom out in a particular case like this, you have to ignore all these negative ones, okay? These aren't real, just, you just have to ignore those, right? And so that's, that's one of the big, big problems. A lot of times you don't have any input at all. Let me disconnect the input. And you say, oh, no, 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 we have something there. It's right there, I can see it. Of course there's something right there. Well, let's go take a look at it. Oh, it's zero hertz. So the instrument itself always puts something at zero hertz. And it's fictitious, it doesn't exist, okay? So that one there is just its starting point, right? So you have to ignore everything right at zero and you have to ignore all the minus ones, right? Okay, so that's the first weird thing about spectrum analyzers is that, is that weird reflection. Okay? So let's say that we wanna zoom in on this. So remember we can say start and stop. So we can say frequency, we can say start. Let's start at 100 megahertz. Let's stop at 500 megahertz. So now we can see right at the bottom here, 100 megahertz is the start, 500 megahertz is, is the uh, stop, and we're in the center. Let's say we want to start at 200 megahertz. 200 megahertz. There's 200, and there's 500. So 300 is going to be somewhere over in here, right? And um, so we can set some range, let's say we set our, uh, our start at 200, okay, and we hit set our stop at 600, and now we have this range, oops, start, that's st start at 200, and the stop, I forgot to push the stop button, stop at 600, and there, now we have a range. Now remember I said we can move this marker around, right, well we can also move the the actual peak around, right? Let's say we want to move it to the middle. We can hit frequency, right? And we can hit center frequency, and we could type it in, or we could use the wheel to move it back and forth, right? So we can make it here, we can make it here. And so right here at 300, we could put it in the middle, right? Or we could type in 300. We could keep going. You know, oh, wait a minute, there's another one. What's this one and what's that one? Why do we have two? So let's hit the marker and we'll say, oh, we have our 300, but what's this one over here? Oh, 600, that's right. That's my first, my second harmonic, right? This is the fundamental, this is the second harmonic. So now we can see both on the same screen. Well, that's kind of cool. So you can see that we can change the span depending on what we want to look at. And we can put the start and the stop or the center in the span so we can change the span. I showed you the other one. Let's say the span. Let's say that we're going to put the uh, we're going to put center at uh, 600 megahertz. Okay. So now that 600 one is there. But we're going to change the span, and we're going to make the span bigger or smaller. Okay. So here. I'm making the span smaller, and so I'm seeing, I'm, I'm kind of zooming in. And here I'm making the span bigger, so I'm, I'm widening out. So this is like the zoom on a lens, right? You can go wide angle or you can go narrow, a telephoto, right? You can go back and forth, so you can, you can use the wheel to, to, go, to, go, to go in and out, or you can type it in. Anything you can do with typing, you can do with the wheel, right? Okay, what about this amplitude thing going on here? How do we, we we've kind of looked at, We've kind of looked at uh, frequency, but what about this amplitude thing? How do we read the amplitude? Well, um, when I was using the marker, it told us right away. So if I put the marker on one of these peaks, it said right here, it said that was at minus 53 dBm. Okay, so it, it just told me. 
minus 27 dBm. I didn't have it on the peak. Minus 27 dBm. So we can move the cursor around and read it off. But what do these lines mean, okay? So over here, it tells me that the display is logarithmic and that it's 10 dBs per step. So, so every line is 10 dB lower, right? But where's zero? On, a, on an oscilloscope, I have ground. I set the zero line someplace. Well, in a, in a spectrum analyzer, we don't set zero. We set maximum, right? Because it can always get lower and lower and lower. It gets noisier and noisier and noisier. But we want to set just the picture. We want to say, well, what's the top of the picture? So we could say, okay, well, we want the top of the picture. We hit, we hit uh, amplitude. The top of the picture is called reference level. And we can say that's zero or that's minus 10. Oh, everything jumped up. That's because uh, I shifted it up. Instead of the top being at zero, I said, no, let's make the top at minus 10. I could say, let's make the top at minus 20. Now everything shifted up again. Or I want to make the top at plus 10. Now everything shifted down. So you get to, you get to set the, where the level is. You can do that with the wheel also, right? So let's say you're interested in this peak here. You can just kind of bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, and, and just when it touches that line, okay, you know that line is at minus 26 dBm because that's where the reference level was set last. So I could say, okay, I'm going to set my reference level to 30 dB plus 30. Oh, now I want it at minus 30. That's right. It's frequency. So you have to remember plus and minus, right? Plus dBm's and minus dBm's. All right. So um, if you ever get in trouble, there's this magic button called preset. And the preset button sends you all back to zero and gives you the picture that you're used to. So let's say that you really messed it up. You uh, set the frequency over here and you had the amplitude. Whoa, the amplitude got, uh, oh no, where am I? I'm, I'm totally lost. I'm totally confused. You hit the preset button. and it brings you back. Some oscilloscopes have a button called auto. It's kind of like that. It puts you back. It puts you at maximum span and some standard. Um, it puts you at reference dB at zero and 10, 10 dB per step. So it automatically automatically changes, changes everything. Okay, so we've talked about frequency. We've talked about span. We've talked about amplitude. Now, the most important thing you're going to be doing with spectrum analyzers is interrogating these, these little spikes here, right? So you want to find them. And I was using the wheel to find them, but that was a bit dodgy. So there's this marker function, like I said, you can move it around, but it has automatic search features. So you could say peak search, and it finds the one here. And that's at the, that's this five megahertz. That's that zero one. That's that fictitious one we need to ignore. But I could say go right. It says next peak right. And it finds that one. And I can say, go right again. Oh, I found that one, found that one, found that one, found that one. Or I could go left and go backwards. So that's an easy way to find the peaks, is to do a peak search. Right? So I think that'll be it for this first video. I've given you the basic ideas. And you can see that the spectrum analyzer are laid out so that you know these are the most important things, frequency, span, and amplitude. And so that's, uh, you know, you can set start and stop with frequency. You can set the center with frequency. You can change the span if you want with span. And then you can change the amplitude, amplitude by setting what this reference level is. You could also change uh, how many, instead of 10 dB per unit, you could say scale, I want, I want 5 dB per unit. And now everything is magnified, right? And so um, it says here 5 dB 5 dB provision. So you can change things with the amplitude button. Um, so those are really the basic things, frequency span, amplitude, and then in order to actually measure things, the marker, the marker is your friend, right? The marker allows you to go around and do everything. So in the next video, we'll take a look at actually making some real measurements.